These soft jaws were milled for this part. However, there's no boring ring available, so the jaws had to be milled with the jaws open. And you'll see the problem here, right there, when I put the part in and close the jaws, we're going to get very little travel. Essentially no travel. Part secured, but the travel should be in the middle. Plus it just wasn't optimal to bore them with, with no stress on them. And so we are now going to use a boring ring to recut these jaws uh, at mid-travel. Here is our new 12-inch boring ring, and I'll meet you back over at the lathe. Before we get too intimate with high horsepower rotating equipment, we should look at this and decide what we don't want to do today. And specifically, this here looks like this guy got his shirt tail caught in the machine and is going for a ride. So let's think about how to avoid that. Uh, this would be a good time to charge my pilot's watch. So I keep that charger right there as a reminder. And I've already got my hair secured. And then uh, the idea of this is uh, the goggles go on before the emergency stop comes off. Those goggles, though, are the kind that fog up. So let's wear this kind instead. And now, put those on. Bring it out of e stop or reset, and now we can start to play with this. All right, I just sent everything to home position to make some room, and we're going to make some more room by removing this air blast nozzle that is otherwise going to hit our new pouring ring. We don't want that. I've already loosened it. So that can come out. I've set the main chuck hydraulic pressure down to 100 PSI, which is uh, about 20% less than the maximum for the boring ring. These are aluminum soft jaws, so we're not going to clamp that strong anyway. And plus, they're pretty tall. And that further reduces uh, the clamping force we want. So now we're going to uh, unclamp this part. And we're going to come in with our, with our new boring ring. This is just out of the bag. enough to lock it a little bit and remember that right now we're at the extreme outside of our travel so we'll see how much it'll go in now with this and remember before you do this you want to make sure the clamping force is down to under 125 so you don't destroy your fancy new boring ring there we go it's clamped and we are in the in the target zone. So we're a little bit on the 
minimum side of the target zone. So let's see if we can make it a bit farther out. So I'm going to unclamp. I'm going to rotate it just a bit. And clamp again. And this time we're a little outside of the middle of the zone. So let's see if we can make it perfect. Yes, that time we are in the middle. So there is an outer mark, which is too far out. We don't want to bore the jaws for that like we had to initially. There's the inner mark, which is dangerous because you're not potentially getting enough travel to achieve full clamping. And then there's a little sweet zone marked in the middle. And we're now right in the middle of the sweet zone. So we can now bore at low RPM up to about 900 RPM. We can bore this out with uh, an insert suitable for an interrupted cut and then we will have a better setup. And just so you can see close, uh, there is that little mark and uh, we are in the sweet spot. In the sweet spot right there.